Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group. I'm back with another edition of the weekly economic review, this time for the week ending June 3rd. 2022. So let's start with a look at this week's markets at the close on Thursday. So negative week again for bonds. So we had rising interest rates on the week. So change of trend here. Um, the stock market was mostly up on the week in local currency. The Canadian dollar was very strong this, this week, which means that the TSX outperformed by a, a wide margin, the S&P 500. But as I am recording this uh, Friday morning, markets are not open yet, but the futures are pointing towards a negative start uh, to the day, about minus 1%. So we'll see where we end up at the end of the week. But uh, the, the, the gap between the TSX and the S&P 500 remains is about 12 13 percent year to date so a strong performance even if it's a the, the strong outperformance on the the downside but still strong outperformance of the tsx so far this year uh, price of oil higher on the week many conflicting news opec willing to pump more uh, to compensate for russia sanctions but inventories in the us are falling so net result is that we're higher on the week uh, canadian dollar followed suit uh, closing in on 80 cents and the euro and gold uh, volatile but positive on the week. So maybe this week I thought I'd go back to the big picture. Um, the uh, our main leading indicators are still pointing towards a tough road ahead. And what you see here on your screen is uh, the red line. That's our favorite indicator. So we look at pretty much all central banks in the world and we look at what the most recent decision was. So if it was a hike. That means that the line will go down by one tick. And if the last decision by central bank was a cut, so to stimulate the economy, well, that's plus one and it goes higher. So as you can see, the red line is pointing towards a lot of weakness ahead. And the blue line is the US PMI, so the Purchasing Manager Index. So that's basically your economic cycle there. So cycle go up, down, up, down. And as you can see, all the way through early 2023, because our leading indicator is good for 11 months forward, pointing towards weakness all the way through Q1 of 2020. So we're still in that uh, in that environment. We'll stay in that environment for a good while. And what you see on the right are a few quotes here. First one from Jamie Dimon. So he's the CEO of uh, the JP Morgan Bank, so the largest private bank in the world. And their leading indicators must also be pointing south because it says that uh, everyone needs to brace themselves for an economic hurricane caused by the Fed and the Ukraine war. So so tightening of monetary policy plus inflation that's uh, hurting economic prospects so there's that the second one this is from this morning from tesla uh, mr elon musk uh, saying that he's uh, getting um, very nervous about the economic prospects and he's looking to cut the labor force of tesla by 10 percent. so that's ten thousand people because they employ a hundred thousand people now so you see more and more of these high profile ceos uh being concerned about the economy and looking to act on it so shutting jobs uh slower investment projects so th this is how you you, you see an economic slowdown uh, unfolding. So that brings us to the markets. So the S&P 500, the earnings uh, should be consistent with what's going on in the economy. And again, the chart that you have on your on your screen here, that's the same leading indicator, the red one. So that's still our monetary policy cycle. As you can see, it's also a good leading indicator of the blue line and the blue line is the year over year growth in earnings. So what that means is that all the way throughout through the rest of the year to 2023, we should see a slowing down of growth in business earnings and then a contraction. So the easy part um, of the sell off maybe is done. That was the price earning ratio contracting. So a change in sentiment pushed the stock market lower year to date. But now the tough part could come where we start to see uh, less and less uh, attractive prospects for earnings growth. And uh, that's the most uh, tough, uh, tough part of the, the, the of a sell off. Usually when you see, you know, the real uh, the real indicators, their businesses saying that they're having a hard time. Maybe that's ahead of us. So we'll see if this time is different. But, you know, the our indicators are pretty all aligned that this is what's ahead of us. So what we've just seen was a 
the bear market rally, but we're probably headed for more uh, weakness according to our indicators at least. And if it change, if it changes, if we change our mind, uh, we'll let you know. But our indicators are not pointing in the right direction right now, and that, that's for sure. So that brings us to Canada. So the Bank of Canada, we had another 50 basis points hike in uh, in June. We should see well this week on June 1st. June, uh, the middle of, of July, we'll have another decision. Probably there's going to be another 50 basis points hike, maybe even 75 basis points if we uh, listen carefully to the message that they sent. Uh, on Thursday, we had Mr. Paul Baudry, who is a uh, deputy governor at the Bank of Canada, giving a speech saying that they probably misread uh, inflation and they'll be, be able to be, uh, they, they'll need to be aggressive uh, with more uh, rate hikes to uh, do their job and probably that brings them all the way to three percent so just now according to the bank of canada the neutral rate is somewhere between two and three percent so the neutral rate being that you're not stimulating the economy anymore but you're not holding it back either somewhere between two and three right now we're at 1.5 so we're still stimulating above three you would be putting the brakes on the economy so the plan here seems to be to go to neutral as quickly as possible. Will they go to 2, 2.5, 3, still up in the air, but uh, we're uh, making some good headways there. The issue that we have right now is, as I've just shown, the global economy is slowing down. Canada is a small open economy, and uh, we that means that we should be importing economic weakness over the next quarters, months, quarters, and maybe uh, next year or two. So if we're importing weakness, do we need to hike as much? Uh, and when you look at the economic data in Canada, we're still having some good numbers. But if you look on the chart on the right, you see that the um, could be the household the confidence uh, survey, so the consumer confidence survey from Bloomberg Nanas is pointing towards a strong, um, strong uh, deceleration, let's say a strong move down. On, on confidence and if you look at previous hiking cycles so let's say uh, 2016 17 18 19 so in this period you were seeing consumer confidence either being flat or even rising uh, as they were hiking so because the economy was getting stronger and stronger now we're seeing the economy probably getting weaker and weaker less and less confidence so if you hike too much maybe there's a real risk here so Expect a, a big rate hike in July, 50, 75 basis points, we'll see. Uh, after that, what comes, uh, it's still it's still a big uh, question mark. Our advice would be to go slowly, to reassess things, make sure that you don't create more economic pressure on top of what's already coming. But uh, we'll see in the Bank of Canada, we'll do what it thinks uh, needs to be done. So uh, what to watch next week in Canada, we'll have the net change in employment. So employment report next Friday in April, we got 15,000 jobs added. So we'll see what we get for May. Um, unemployment rate uh, was at 5.2. And in the US, we'll have a very important ind indicator the inflation figure should be down a bit at 8.2 percent year over year so still high and we'll have the consumer confidence survey so right now the most important data points would be employment uh, consumer confidence what central banks are doing and the inflation figure so we're right in the mix of that so we'll keep you posted next week on the new uh, uh, developments there so um that wraps it up for the week ia.ca slash economy can always follow us there subscribe to the newsletter if you haven't done so there's some new material already in preparation again for Economy Finance 101. So uh, it's coming over the next few weeks. And you can always follow me on Twitter, on, on LinkedIn, and a PDF copy of this presentation will be dropped on LinkedIn way before you, you, you get this video. So uh, when you when you listen to, 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 to this, just go to LinkedIn, search for my name, and you'll find uh, the PDF version if that's something you'd like to have. So uh, that wraps it up. It's always a pleasure to serve you and I'll see you again next week.